So what we found here is a stand of birch and uh, I see some birch here that are small and uh, narrow. I could use a birch like that for sure to make a basket. But we're going to have a closer look at the, at the birch. We're also going to watch for uh, any kind of uh, things that could hurt us like poison ivy, uh, wasp nests, anthills. Those things can be nasty. I've uh, taken birch off a tree standing in a anthill and just coming up my legs, biting my legs. And so you have to be really careful because you get focused on something you don't realize there's things that could hurt you here. Okay, this isn't the tree that we want, but I want to give you a demonstration here of what a bad tree looks like. Yeah. So I'm clearing the area around here so I can look at the base of the tree. I use an X-Acto knife. I can use any knife, but X-Acto knife is really good because I can set it to the depth of the bark and I'm not going to hit into the cambium layer of the tree. If I use a knife like this, there's no way of setting the depth. So I'm going to go at the base about a foot up, foot and a half up from the base, and I'm going to make an incision about four inches long and about two inches and two inches then I get a sturdier knife and put it in here and pull it back okay, right away I can tell this isn't good bark and I'll show you why so I'm going to pull that back and cut that off this is what we call booking bark it, it just it goes like pages of a book and if it goes like pages of a book like you see here it's useless for making anything uh, into a basket or a canoe, uh, any vessel that you want to hold water in. It's, uh, it would be okay to make a uh, birch bark biting because that's the kind of bark you want for birch bark biting and it's the kind of bark you'd want for making a quill box. Yeah, it's very, very thin, very, very papery. In fact, this is known as paper birch. And so that would be, I didn't harm the tree by doing that. Um, it is now going to be left uh, to grow because it's not going to be good. It might be good in years to come as the bark changes. Uh, in its thickness and depth. But in this grove here, I can see that none of these trees are gonna be any good to me because they all have the same look. They're, they're peeling very, 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 uh, a lot like that. There's no moss growing on them except at the very base. Um, they don't have a good look for what I want. Come on in, I'll show you what has a good look. This is a poplar tree. It looks from the distance, it looks very much like a birch tree, but when you come up to it, you see the green inflections. You see a lot more knots on it, and the birch tree in the background, very different. Birch uh, bark is very smooth. This is very rough and very, uh, um, a lot of knots in it. Um, both birch and poplar have something called bloom. That's this white stuff that comes right off. You can, there's actually quite a bit of it on here. Uh, it comes on the tree and grows heavily from now until springtime on the tree. And that's what protects every tree, even the birch has it as well. If you're going to get a warm spell in the wintertime, if you didn't have the bloom, the sap of the tree would start to uh, uh, get hot and it would start uh, sort of running as if it was springtime. And then all of a sudden you get a freeze and then it cracks. And you can see where that's happened on this a uh, poplar tree where there wasn't enough bloom to prevent that from happening. You can see it on the birch trees as well where there wasn't enough bloom to prevent that from happening and then the, the uh, frozen sap inside cracked the bark. The birch tree is much better protected though so it has much larger areas of nice clear smooth skin. The poplar not as well protected but poplars don't live as long either. Uh, birch trees will outlive them like twice as much whereas the poplars will die because of this unfortunate feature that can kill them. This is a poplar tree, no good to us. We want the birch trees that you see behind there. In a forest like you see here, I will look around and I'll check out uh, the birches that are in here and out of a hundred trees I might find two, five that are good enough to do what I want to do, that are, that are good enough to make the, the birch bark baskets that I want to make. So I have to go and search it out. The old tale is that Manitou saw that all the native people were using way too much uh, birch bark and, uh, and birch in general. And so what he did was he went, took a willow switch, went through the forest and started swacking all the trees except for maybe two, three or five in, in a forest. And so then the natives after that had to be very careful how many birch they took out of the forest. They had to go search for them. They had to work much harder to get them. And uh, that's the, the, the way that, that, that rolls. And I find it's very, very true. I have to walk a lot to get the stuff that I want.
So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull out this piece. That doesn't book. So I can't flip it like the books of a page. That's a beautiful piece of birch. I'm getting excited here. So that's a beautiful piece of birch. But what I have here is called winter bark. So it's already gone through its summer phase. So the bark now has a rind on it. When you pull it off in the springtime, it is very, very um, smooth and tan in color. When you take it off now, it is a, I guess a darker color, the best way to describe it. In fact, as it dries, it'll turn dark red. The winter bark's beautiful in the fact that when it's finished and it's dried, I can make a basket out of it or a canoe, and then I can scratch off the rind and I can put different designs into it just by scratching off the rind. The rind will stay red, below it will stay clear or a tan color, and you get a really neat contrast. Natives would do artwork along the edge of the canoe that way, or at the very front and the very back of the canoe. Winter bark, as you're gonna see now, is much harder to take off the tree than it is in the springtime. At this point in time, we are in end of August. You might think that, well, it's not winter. How could you call it winter bark? Well, once you've passed uh, the sap running time of June, May, uh, you're going to then run into the time that the sap starts uh, creating the cambrium layer and the rind sticks to the tree. And now you're not going to get any kind of, uh, uh, of peeling like you normally would. Normally when I would peel this tree, it would just pop off. I'm gonna have to work at it today to get it off, okay? So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm going to get myself a sapling of poplar. All right, so what I've done is I've take, taken the sapling that's nice and straight, like so. Depending on how big of a piece of bark I want to take, that's how long I would take the sapling. Here I don't have a long distance to go, so I'm going to find a piece of sapling that's about that long. You'll see what it's for in a minute. So I look at this tree and you can see it looks a lot different than that paper birch bark that we looked at earlier. You can see that it's very, very um, rugged looking. That's the better way I can describe it. It's got a lot of moss on it. If you look on the north side, it's all green with moss. Um, afterwards, you have to have a look at that. Over here, you'll see a big patch of lichen, green lichen. Uh, that tells me that this bark has some character and that it's going to be good bark. Whether we're going to be able to get it off this tree really nicely, we'll find out now. This is the hardest bark to take off a tree because it is winter bark. If we get it off, it's going to be El Primo. It's going to be the, the pick of the century here. Okay, so next thing I do is set the depth of my knife to the depth of the bark that I have taken out here. So now I'm going to look around the tree and find the best place to cut. So I'm looking for the knots of the tree. I got a big knot here. So the piece I'm going to get is going to be from here up to about here. I'm going to cut on the back of the tree because the back of the tree here is kind of mottled. This looks clearer. Okay, so I'm going to get up here. So now, where does the tree start turning? It starts turning somewhere up here. Yeah, okay, so I should be able to get up that high. And I, it gets really bad down here, so I'm not gonna get any bark down here for sure. So I'm gonna get up as high as I can get, stick it in, and pull it down. And because I know it's set to the right depth, I don't have to worry about how much pressure I put on it. I can just pull it all the way down. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna go one more time. Yeah, beautiful. Wonderful. Now, if we were doing this in the springtime, this would be popping already. It would be opening up. I'm not doing it right now because it's not springtime. Okay, now I'm going to go laterally. A lot of pressure. Now, you see here, there's that lichen I was talking about. That's a really neat feature. There's green moss on here. That tells me that you know, that's, chances are this is going to be a good tree. Not every time. Now, what I also am looking for is any redness down here. If I see redness in the bark, that means it has a, a red blight and the tree is going to be useless. When, you, when I open that up, it's going to be full of disease. There's a lot of the trees in here have that. It seems to be hitting the trees more and more in this area. Um, this is a clear cut area that's been uh, taken for uh, pulp wood. And what's going to happen, these trees are going to be dying in short order because there's nothing uh, left around them uh, to keep them healthy. So harvesting here is a good thing. In my mind, I'm thanking this tree for what it's about to give us. This isn't gonna kill this tree right away. Um, I've had trees that I've taken bark off of that lived for many, many years afterwards. In the days of building birch bark canoes, the natives would take bark off of a tree and come back afterwards, a year later, and see how that tree is doing. 
that would tell how well their, uh, the life of their canoe would be as well because of the fact that the tree was still living, that they, they did it with honor. They, they took that tree bark and did it right. All right, so now I'm not going to do that at the top because I'll just let that peel off naturally. I'm going to put this away. This isn't a strong enough knife now. I need a stronger knife. So I got one with a strong blade. And now comes the hard part. I'm going to dig in here. You can see that the transition from this pulpy stuff to the good bark. This is very pulpy here because of this knot, um, but I'm not going to worry about that. I just want the bark above that. If this again was springtime, this would just be popping right off. When you're dealing with winter bark, very seldom will you get a beautiful big piece of bark like you would see for making a canoe. You're going to get strips of bark because of the fact that it doesn't want to come off the tree. I'm using my arm to support it right now so that I can make enough room to get that nice switch that we just made underneath the bark. So into every basket, into every canoe, anything to make out of birch bark, there is quite a bit of preamble to make sure that you have the right materials as you're seeing here today. Now you understand why I'm using the stick? And it doesn't want to come off. Now as I see something like this happen, it wasn't cut quite deep enough there, so I have to just make sure that comes along. There we go. Okay. It's coming actually really nice. Doesn't look it, but for, for winter bark, it's coming really, really nice. There's another one. There's a woodpecker hole. See right there? So as you can see, it's wanting to go into strips, which is very common. And that's why you, on canoes, you'll see strips of winter bark rather than massive pieces of winter bark for design. Sometimes you get a really nice big piece if you're lucky, like I'm hoping to have happen here. I'm trying to prevent that from happening. There we go. Okay, we've got another spot here. Another, uh, woodpeckers are the, the scourge of any birch bark guy. Yeah. Now you can see here, that's just a, a bit of disease that the bark has right there, which it makes a, for a very interesting basket. Like a lot of people, oh, that's no good. But I've made baskets with that and people say, wow, I like that. You know. That's, so it's not something that is going to be throwing this bark away at all. But you can see this here is beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, tree. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But if I was making something, like I said, for a serviceable uh, vessel, I would probably take that off. Uh, it doesn't come off that easy. So you'd have to peel it off. Um, and so this is really nice thick stuff. This is a little about 16th of an inch thick. Uh, got a lot of strength to it. And as I said, the big thing about this one is that it is a winter bark. So I have to be very careful with this. You can see it scratches very easily. What we're going to do now is we're going to put it this way. I'm going to roll it up. And that's how we transport it so it doesn't get damaged. That is one beautiful piece of winter bark. You guys, you don't see this very often. This is beautiful. This is really, really nice. I'm so happy. <laughs> I think, I think we're good. We can go get some roots. It. It feels like velvet, such, eh? Yeah, it's such a nice feeling. Now this will turn black, and then it'll get a rind on it, a black rind, and underneath the rind, it'll get a second skin. Now the second skin comes in all really weird and, and twirly and squirrely grained. And when I was on, in Nova Scotia working with the uh, Miigwa uh, Confederacy there, and they wait for that second rind to come in, then they'll go peel that off and they make these beautiful baskets out of it. Because it's very, very articulate. The problem is the tree then dies. So they harvest the tree for making paddles and, and whatever else at that time, or firewood uh, at that time. Uh, so there you go. Again, thank you, tree.